Speaking of censorship, apparently our friends at Peacock are now going to have their grubby fingers all over the WWE network before we get to look at everything that that uh, they have to offer there. Is this what I'm hearing? Yeah, this is something that wrestling fans first started noticing sometime in the last week. And then there have now been several articles in high-profile publications, the New York Daily News, the New York Post. I have one here from The Hollywood Reporter. The headline, Racist WWE moments are being removed as classic matches move to Peacock. And as 17,000 hours of wrestling programming transition from WWE Network to Peacock, fans have noticed that some scenes are missing, and the first two notable scenes are Roddy Piper at WrestleMania 6 against Bad News Brown in Toronto painted half his body black. And it was certainly a bad decision. <laughs> and I don't understand what the point of it was. Roddy has said, you know, it was the era of true colors. And this, but true colors came out several years before that. So that argument didn't really work either. <laughs> bad News Brown wasn't very happy about it. I remember seeing an interview with him, uh, Bad News <laughs> Allen, years ago. So they removed that. And also the other one is one of those ones that people always point at and go, what was this? Was Vince using the N-word in whatever, 2006 or so, backstage, I think to Booker T, of all people. No, no, no. What it was was he said it to John Cena, and Booker, and T, Booker T was standing was there. One of those deals where he was standing around and overheard it. So he could say, did he just say that? And again, I think this raises several issues, one of which is it seems like the move to Peacock's being rushed. Because they don't even have the functionality at the WWE yeah. Network of having uh, specific moments indexed or the ability to scrub the, uh, you know, go from one thing to another easily or pause or whatever it is. They're not ready yet. It's being rushed because of WrestleMania. But the other thing is this idea of mass censorship of moments that, as of now, it's only being talked about for what are being called racist moments in wrestling history. And it raises a lot of questions about what could or may be edited. Will every time Jesse Ventura called Tito Santana Chico be edited? <laughs> will, I mean, just there's so many, will Saba Simba be edited just based on what the gimmick was? I mean, there's so many different things, so many things that have been said. The business used to be a different business, and I'm not justifying it, but there are a lot of promos by a lot of guys that were somewhat racially tinged oh, i mean 1990 wcw mine may disappear just for innuendo and and uh etc 1990 wcw flair and jyd with rocky king i guess all that would be gone but the issue becomes about censorship you know the muppets just went up on disney plus a moment that sexy geeks like myself really look forward to and they put a disclaimer up for the muppet show for the, what? What's the disclaimer for the Muppets? Saying there may be some moments that are slightly insensitive, what? But, they're, but they're leaving them up, you know, because it's, it's historical context. There for the was, Muppets. For the Muppet Show. Which, by the way, Harry Belafonte appeared on because he felt the Muppets were a unifying force and it was a wonderful thing to show the people of the world that these Muppets could all get along the way white, black, and everyone could get along. Yeah, why can't you Muppets get along like these Muppets get along? And we saw a couple of years ago, Gone with the Wind, there was an issue with that, with HBO. And I think the question is, do you just whitewash things and censor things out of shows, or do you leave it there so that it can be discussed and learned from? And you, well, you could have a disclaimer there to say there's a moment during this WrestleMania show where Roddy Piper painted himself half black, uh... <laughs> And, and again, you it's something that, that might be a challenging graphic to write. You, you understand. I'm just I'm not saying that'll be the verbiage they would use there. But <laughs> I think that that's the issue. If it's just people who know nothing about wrestling and most of the people in WWE don't know anything about wrestling. But if it's Peacock people, Peacock people, that's they yeah. are going yeah. in there. The, or as Dave Shearer calls them, the cock. If they're going in there and reviewing this footage and just deciding on their own what makes it or doesn't make it, that's troubling for wrestling history in its video form. From Mid-South Wrestling to Crockett Promotions to WWE, whatever's been on the network, if all of a sudden everything from 
30 years ago is being edited for the sensibilities of today, that is troublesome. Well, nobody is going to miss the promo where Vince used the N-word to Cena. That was just a throwaway thing. Shouldn't have been done anyway, because Vince obviously thought it would be funny. Even when you start taking matches out of WrestleMania, even though even though nobody knows why that Roddy decided that it would be a good idea to paint himself half black and and he was the baby face, but I'm sure in his mind and probably in his promos, even if nobody understood it, he explained it. Um that's a that's a step farther, but still okay. That's nobody can make the case that that was a legendary match in Roddy Piper's career. It was another of the matches that he had. But as you said, not just a, a, for a racist word, but now a, a you know r- this is viewed as objectionable, and not just about race. What about? of uh, some type of sexual innuendo, or what kind of just inflammatory? Remember when? TBS actually sent out a memo to World Championship Wrestling. I reprinted it in the Midnight Express book that the wrestling show should not have gratuitous violence. So you had a company that owned a television program about gratuitous violence telling them not to have any. Was that around a period of time where you couldn't use the term foreign object anymore. Yes, it had to be yes. international object. Because Ted Turner wanted to promote uh, global friendship, so you couldn't say foreign, so we started saying international object. Um, it, it, you know, when you, and when you start finding some schlub that's never watched wrestling, that has no idea who these people are, what it was about, what it was about then, what it's about now, any context whatsoever about the thing, and just watch this for objectionable shit, then it depends on who's watching it as whether it is objectionable. You can watch any program, especially uh, some of the newer comedies, and not have a context on the characters or the history of the show or things that they do, and they refer to things that you could take in the wrong way, and oh my God. But classic wrestling should be the easiest television to edit that has ever been because no territory is allowed profanity no territory is allowed nudity no territory is allowed any sexual content past the borderline shit that i used to get and one time on tbs i said something david crockett actually came and talked to me about it i said this i said and by the way it was right when joan collins the actress And her husband, Peter Holm, an Englishman, had just gotten divorced. And also Madonna had just divorced the actor Sean Penn. So I said, Madonna has divorced Sean Penn. Sweet Stan could be Madonna's next Sean. Joan Collins and Peter Holm got a divorce. Sweet Stan could be Joan Collins' (laughs) next Peter. And David Crockett came and said, no, you can't. This is TBS. That's the so the point is yeah all those promos you did about baby doll gone oh well yeah I'm but see that's the thing I never used profanity I never cursed I never got sexual but I was as insulting as possible about her appearance and her character um and I did the same and one time with sunshine leading up to the uh. Star Wars at Tarrant County Convention Center in Fort Worth, the 4th of July, 85, when we had that confrontation. I actually cut the promo where I said all the things like she's been on more street corners in the Dallas Times Herald, and her first name was Virginia. They used to call her Virgin for short, but not for long. And the the TV station was going, oh, shit, but at the same time, they couldn't, they didn't need to edit it. I'm not cursing. And, and it's going by so quick, but then I knew one thing. I could either get it by or I knew how to say it where everybody would know what the fuck I was talking about. I ended up one of the promos. I said, boy, I just wish I could say the word slut on TV. And they bleeped slut and everybody could read my lips, right? But point is... And then she had Miro go on Twitter to threaten you. Yes, to threat, yeah. 
No, actually, she enjoyed that fucking thousand dollar check she got for fucking standing there watching Kabuki kick me and knock me out and then pinning me herself without fucking taking one bump. That's what she enjoyed. But anyway, so point is, if you have somebody that doesn't know anything about what the thing has been, and also it's so stupid to begin with to go back and pull stuff out of movies or books or anything that was a product of the time and done in, and maybe for children until they re reach the age of what you know, kids better than I do 10 or 12 and could possibly grasp the fact that this is the way things used to be, even though it was bad. And now things are this way, but we're not going to go back and tear up this movie that a hundred million people enjoy because you know, the, the the doctor was smoking in the hospital room in the movie. They're going to cut all that out too? Whatever the fuck. Things change, people change, cultures change, times change, often for the worse, sometimes for the better. But unless you are using graphic profanity, obscene, vulgar, whatever the fuck, then everything else... Do you know that the first television program that ever had an all black cast and was and starred african americans on network television has no longer been able to be aired on television for the last 50 years by complaint of the NAACP Amos and Andy Amos and Andy it was pulled in 1966 one of the most popular television programs of the 50s the first network television program not only just to have an all-black cast, but maybe to have anybody but the stray peripheral character uh, uh, it, as, as a black person on television. And based on the radio program that was created by two white guys that did black voices, right? But they couldn't, they didn't do that. They didn't say, oh, we're going to put these two white guys out there that have had this radio show for 25 years in blackface. They said, we're going to cast black actors and actresses and they did and it was a huge hit and one of the funniest tv shows that's ever been aired on television in any era and they got it pulled because they were mad because it it that would be like if if hillbillies from east tennessee or west virginia campaigned to get the beverly hillbillies banned from television because nobody in their right mind would think that Amos and Andy were a representation of black people as would think that Jethro Bodine and Granny Clampett were a representation of the average white person. So sometimes these, these things you don't go the way that they might, you might think that they would. And I'm just worried. I'll give you another example about here's something that was censored from one wrestling promotion to the other. Remember the, Greatest hour of wrestling television in recorded history, Mid-South Wrestling, Flair versus DiBiase, the bloodbath where they switched yeah. Teddy heel, uh, switched Teddy Babyface. November 85, yeah. November 85, Murdoch uh, fucking came out and turned on him, blah, blah, blah. I was in Charlotte at that point, and Flair was booked to four watts through Jimmy Crockett, obviously, and... They did that angle leading up to there's going to be another Superdome. Flair was going to be defending the title or whatever, and they were going to do it. But they sent the tape of that television program and that match to Charlotte to insert or do something with to promote something on the television. And the point is, Jackie Crockett, I had seen it because I'd seen the tape, right? Because I got all the VHSs of the different territories sent to me regularly. This was probably in... January of 86 or so. It was several weeks after the match had happened. And Jackie Crockett came in, and I don't know how I was alerted. I think I may have heard it playing in the in the other room while they were looking at it. I said, is that the flare match or whatever? Yeah. He said, it looks like Teddy got run through a razor blade factory. We can't fucking air this. We can't send this. We can't put it on TBS, and we can't send it to half of the broadcast stations in our territory, especially Roanoke, Virginia, right on top of Lynchburg. People have seen one of the local promos I did one time where they actually told the TV station had, had called and said, Falwell's complaining 
do not speak so violently on your interviews. So I did a three minute interview on how I wished I could say all the violent things we were going to do, but I couldn't because of other people meddling in my business. Uh, so they, they wouldn't show the blood and this was a wrestling program, but that was spectacular amounts of blood. So there was even some difference in the territory days between what you could and couldn't get away with on television or what you couldn't show or what they didn't want to show just to not rock the boat. Um, and now if, if you've got some modern day non wrestling fan, young person watching old wrestling, they could be mortified by everything. Hey, I got one for you. When they re-upload Mid-South Wrestling, do you think they leave in Bill Watts calling you a sissy? Well, that's... Or I wonder, do it, how much world-class uh, wrestling do they have up? Oh, you're going to talk about the some... Freebirds and the Confederate flag? Well, no, I was going to talk about the constant f- chance. Uh, those... <laughs> oh, I'm sorry for that. We got to edit that off of YouTube. But no... I was a si- I, I was I was a sissy in mid south but Bobby Fulton used to get him to to chant Cornette is a wimp in Dallas but they a ton a ton of those f word chants at gorgeous Jimmy Garvin as I remember uh in that territory back in those days and then also I think there was some of that in WCW they did the same thing for when the when the Freebirds Hayes and Garvin were wearing I make up and trying to be David Lee Roth eighties instead of Ronnie Van Zant seventies. They got a ton of those. Um, anything involving Adrian street, Adrian Adonis, uh, Adrian, well, Adrian, and that wearing the pink dress, the moo moo, that was a bit much anyway, although it was more flattering for his figure than a form fitting gown. Um, who knows? Who knows what these people could have a problem with as relates to wrestling? And that's why, again, the network has been great for the people who have accessed it who didn't get these VHSs or see it first time around. And it's been great to be able to see all the historical stuff and et cetera. But also it's one corporate conglomerate that doesn't care about the necessarily the art of the situation that owns everything. And if Peacock wants to fucking cut it up, you think they're going to say, no, you can't take that out. That's a classic match. It means a ton to the fans. They're going to go take anything out you want. You gave us a billion dollars. So I'm glad I saved my VHSs. We'll be going back to those pretty soon. I just, I, I, I do not have good feelings. I don't, I, I'm trepidatious. I think, uh, there's no chance Smoky Mountain Wrestling is going to get put up now. <laughs> Tracy Smothers running around with the Confederate flag. <laughs> There's no way. Well, wait a minute. They can't just not show. Yes, they can. Would people be, would people be that upset about that? Well, then, then there's movies. But I got Deliverance. Oh, yeah. Dukes of Hazard gone. Dukes of Hazard. <laughs> it's the same thing. Have you ever seen a movie called Southern Comfort? You know, it sounds familiar, but I'm not sure. Uh, Powers Booth was in the film back when he was a thing, but it was about these National Guardsmen that are deployed somehow on uh, maneuvers or whatever they call it in southern Louisiana and run afoul of some of the Cajuns that live down in the swamp. And that's a disturbing flick. I've got it on VHS. I've never seen it on DVD, but it's it's very interesting. And since I lived in Louisiana and saw some of those locations, you can also see it. It's a very believable film. Anyway, and by the way, you brought up Dave Shearer earlier. I just want to mention here because this Hollywood Reporter article says it was first reported by PW Insider, so we should give them credit. Yeah, and it also has the quote from the Roddy Piper interview from WrestleMania Six, and I think this is important. Like I said, okay. this is why things have to be put in historical context and explained, as opposed to just erased and we pretend like it wasn't there. The promo from Roddy Piper was. I hear bad news, Brown. He's talking about Harlem and how he's proud to be from Harlem. Now I could stand here and I could be black. I could be white. Don't make no difference to me. It's what's inside. Huh. So again, I'm not justifying Roddy's decision to go a half blackface or half. It's not even a face. It was his whole body. 
But that's where the content of the promo was uplifting. Yeah, it was. We're all equal. If you're an asshole, whether you're white or black, you're an asshole. But if on the inside, you're a good person, you're a good person. But that's why I fear just deletion of history as opposed to sitting down and having what could be at times an uncomfortable thought or or talk about it. But you need that. You need to actually understand things as opposed to this offends me now. So let's erase it and pretend like it wasn't there. And then also there, as we've seen, some people are professionally offended. If, if being offended about something gets them attention, then they do more of it in the future so that they can get some more attention because they got nothing else to do with their life. So now that they know that, then is it going to be that people start writing, well, we don't like so-and-so from 1992 so we're going to write in and tell them that's offensive and they can take that all out and then it does it become okay everybody gets to chip in on what we take out and edit i mean you were talking about oscar earlier what if someone who is of polynesian descent who's a younger person goes and sees footage of the wild samoans and says my god this is highly offensive Eat, eating fish and carrying bones around Eating, you know, the sheik, biting people's ties. This is not how Syrians behave. I mean, <laughs> the, quite, quite the literally. The Syrian lobby will be most upset. Quite literally, I, w- I will say this. I've never seen a single Arab American or Middle Easterner behave the way the sheik did. Has there ever been any ex- explanation <laughs> as to why the sheik behaved in the way that well, he did? Well, no, actually, yes, there, there actually was because he was not only. He came from a wealthy Middle Eastern family and had all the money and slave girls and everything that he wanted, but also he was mentally deranged and was uncontrollable at some times and had to have the American spokesperson, whether it be, or not American sometimes, but the spokesperson, the manager, whether it be Abdullah Farouk or Eddie Creechman or whatever, to control him and conduct his business because it was impossible to communicate with this eccentric and madman. Or just because it looked good on TV. 